So you want to land a data science job, but maybe you're wondering how. Keep watching and I'll give you some tips to help you land that dream job. I'm Richard and this is Richard on Data. So I've received a number of requests, understandably so, asking how to land that sweet data science job or even just how to pass an interview. And I'm going to give you five tips to land that job. But I am just going to focus here on your standard run-of-the-mill data science job. So we're not focusing here on the fangs of the world. That is Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. These strategies are going to help you if you're interested in one of those roles. But those positions and interviews tend to be of a little bit of a different caliber. So the strategies for those types of jobs are going to be a bit different. Before we do that, maybe you're new here and you're asking yourself, who's this Richard guy and what qualification does he have to tell me how to get a job? And that would be a totally fair question. So I've been the one on the other side of the table, meaning I've interviewed people for internships and for full-time positions before. And I've also had to switch jobs a couple times over the last few years. And every time, I actually didn't apply for that many jobs. But I think out of the jobs that I did apply to, I had a pretty good rate of landing interviews and eventually converting those interviews into offers. Except for Google. I applied there a couple years ago and I made it all the way to the last round and then I got absolutely destroyed. But let's not talk about that. Last time I was actively in the job market, I did get three offers in just over a couple months. And one of those months was December, which is a pretty slow time for recruitment in general. Granted, all of that was before the economic recession that happened here in the United States, but it was also in the greater Detroit area, which is not the best area in the world for data science jobs right now, but also far from the worst, too. So the tips I'm going to give you in this video are all things that have worked for me, and luckily none of them should cost you a dime. Before I get into these tips, just a few things that I ask of you guys. Number one, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Number two, smash the like button to this video because that really does help my content reach a larger audience. Also, I do have a link in the description of this video to my Patreon account. So if you guys are willing to support me that way, it would be greatly appreciated. All right, so my first tip is probably going to be somewhat counterintuitive, but my first piece of advice would be to apply to fewer jobs. Now, why would I suggest that? Well, I really do think a lot of people just make the mistake of applying to way too many jobs, and after a certain point, it just becomes counterproductive, because there's no way that you're going to be able to effectively keep track of that many different people and that many different companies. Quite frankly, you're just going to be much better off having 10 really solid job applications as opposed to having 100 crappy ones. More on that in tip number 5, actually. Work smarter, not harder, as the saying goes. There's also a lot of jobs out there that, honestly, you're not going to want anyway. And the easiest red flag to spot this is when you have these insane lists of requirements, 100 different programming languages. You also want to focus on jobs that A, you're truly qualified for, and B, you would actually genuinely enjoy doing. I would also recommend focusing on a particular domain that you're interested in. So for instance, maybe it's in healthcare. I would look for data related jobs in the healthcare field. This is going to have more and more benefit over the long run too as you gain more experience with that domain. It's just going to make it that much easier to get other healthcare related data science jobs in the future. But you also don't necessarily have to limit yourself just to jobs which are titled data scientist. You may get the job and you're doing real data science, but the job title is called analytics professional, research scientist, statistician, there are other examples. So don't get too hung up just on names. Job description and maybe your first phone screen with HR should give you some pretty clear information about what the role is going to entail. So if it's close enough to your own passions as well as to what classic data science is, by all means, go for it. My second tip is to have some kind of portfolio. And I gotta be honest, historically, this has been the one that I've personally been the laziest about myself. And that's just because this one is less about actively chasing or pursuing that job, and more about building an appropriate foundation. 
Let's face it, many companies will want to see that you're truly proficient, so they're going to want to see some code you've written in the past or some projects that you've worked on in the past. And the best way to share this kind of thing is through a portfolio. The best way to actually go about setting up a portfolio would be through GitHub. You can include code from previous project work that you've done with other organizations, or if this is your very first job, you could just include code from project work that you've worked on in school. If your portfolio is a little skimpy or you're just generally lacking in real world projects, another thing that you could do is go to Kaggle and work on some projects there. And this will help give you experience across the spectrum. You can work on things like data exploration, visualization, machine learning, etc., etc. Now there's no substitute for real world project experience, but this can only help you. For tip number three, it's know the right stuff for the role, but also be honest about what you know. Now there's a couple parts to this. First of all, you're probably not going to fake your way into a job. You do need to know things. So I'll have a link in the description of this video, as well as a card up above, to a video I did on a study pathway to data science. And this video will outline some key skills that you're gonna need for data science in general, and also a good order to learn these things in. But the bottom line is, it'll be pretty tough to get most data science jobs if you don't have familiarity with these three things. Those are statistics, SQL, and either one of R or Python. And I talk about some resources for learning these things in that video, but you do need to actually know these things and not just say you know these things. Plenty of people will put things on their resumes, but interviewers will generally have pretty strong BS detectors. So once something's on your resume, it's generally fair game to get some kinds of coding questions on it. And if you greatly exaggerated your competency in that thing, Trust me, as somebody who's been on both sides of this equation, it's usually pretty obvious. You're not gonna be better off by fluffing up your resume with a lot of junk. You're gonna be much better off with a shorter resume that's focusing on the key skills for that position in question. So brush up on stuff. Play with some R or SQL code. Brush up on your stats too. I have a video on how much stats you need for data science and that one will be linked in the description as well. But if you get a technical question during an interview and you don't know the answer to it, that is actually okay. You can start by detailing your thought process or at least how you would begin to start attacking that problem. And that's gonna look much better than lying on your resume to say that you're an expert at something that you actually aren't. Again, if a job actually wants you to know 50 different things, that's not a job that you want in the first place. Now tip number four is an extremely powerful one, and it's to use what's commonly referred to as the storyboard technique once you've made your way to an interview. This is a general job interview strategy rather than something that's necessarily data science specific, but it is particularly powerful with data science because you're naturally going to be competing with a number of people who are very tech savvy, but they might struggle a little bit in terms of thinking and communicating about adding business value. The technique is you want to tell stories about your previous work, and these stories are gonna have four distinct parts, a premise, the problem, the solution, and the outcome. In the premise, lay the foundation. And this doesn't have to be much, but just put the interviewer in your previous organization's shoes for a little bit. Tell them a little bit about the organization and or the people that you were working with. Next, lay out the problem that they faced. All companies have problems and challenges. That's exactly why they hire people to help. Then you're gonna talk about the solution that you worked on. So that cool model or dashboard or report that you built, give some details on what that thing is and what it did. Finally, and this is probably the most important part, you need to talk about the impact that your work had on the business or on some specific metric. And if you weren't around to see the impact, at a minimum, talk about the impact that your work intended to have.
If this is your first internship or job ever, granted, I understand, this can be pretty challenging to do, but at least with the kind of schoolwork that you've done before, try to do as many pieces of the storyboard technique as possible. This will certainly be way better than nothing. But otherwise, you're inevitably going to get questions about the previous projects and work that you've done in the past. And this is without question the best way that you can answer that question. This really communicates to the interviewer that not only are you a technically competent person, but you're somebody who can speak the same language as them. And for my last tip, there's a lot of people out there who are worried about data science jobs later being done by robots. So if you want to have that job rather than a robot having it, my advice would be don't act like a robot. So what do I mean by that? Well, you need to do something that, at this time, only humans can do, and that's put some real effort into your application and to building a relationship with the person or people that you're interviewing with. For starters, and this gets back to tip number one, but your application shouldn't look and feel like you're just going through the motions and sending application number 183. And first of all, you shouldn't be applying for 183 jobs. When you start your application somewhere, you want to start it off strong. And that means, at a minimum, including a personalized cover letter to that organization explaining how you can help solve their specific problems. Before that, you should probably do some research about the domain and the company so you actually have an idea how you can help solve their problems. You might try reaching out directly to the hiring manager rather than just sending your application in through the company website or LinkedIn or whatever you're using because only a very small percentage of people are going to do this and it's definitely going to set you apart. Send a thank you note after you do the interview. Maybe mention something specific that you talked about with them or somebody else during the interview process. Again, you're a real human being here who's building a relationship with another human being, and that pays massive dividends when we're talking about some other human being making the decision to give you an offer of employment. Hopefully this helps you get on the right track towards landing your ideal data science job. But remember, no two data science jobs are exactly the same, and there's going to be tons of jobs out there that you're just not going to get no matter what, or that just aren't a really good fit for you. But if you do these things, I really do think you're going to maximize your chances of getting the job that's right for you. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, once again, hit that like button, and also let me know down in the comments below how you got your data science job. Then I'll see you all in the not-so-distant future. Until then, Richard, on data.